Uh, Adrian FedQ, uh, Bitter Birds, yeah. and Philly Influencer. How are you doing today? Well, I, I, well, right now I'm uh, I'm feeling the effects from okay. the, the last two days. So a beautiful Christmas, lots of eggnog, uh, beautiful time with the family. I'm feeling good though because it was a great win to still stay in the playoff hunt, to still be in it, considering where they kind of were a couple weeks ago. Right, kind of ready to give up on the season. It's it's feeling a lot like oh eight. If you think about it, you, you know that if this Eagles team gets in the playoffs, they're going to be dangerous. And the NFC is starting to kind of falter. Saints are coming down the earth. The Rams, they were just beat by, by the Eagles. True. So if this team gets in, who knows what can happen? And 08, obviously, Eagles were, were not really in, in control of their own destiny. Right, right. They needed help from, it, it was Oakland beating Tampa Bay and Houston beating Chicago. That got the Eagles in the playoffs. So if if they can get help this week, obviously, from uh, hopefully, you know, please, Chicago, <laughs> please don't pull the starters. But but the, the more important thing might actually be this Rams game and the 49ers just hanging around. They need to hang around. If, if the Rams blow them out early, Chicago's going to take their starters out. Minnesota's going to roll to that victory. So uh, got, got to count on those 49ers, those pesky 49ers as well. Not only... I hate Chicago. to count. I hate, I hate to count on other people. I know but today, you know, we're, we're we're out of control here. Yeah, but I, you know, today I'm going to count on uh, Diaz. Right on from Philly influencer. That's right. How you doing today, man? Pretty good. Now, Adrian right here was a little too hot, and, and Jeff was a little too cold. I'm good, I'm just right. I'm right in the middle. Oh, you're, I, bringing us, you're bringing us back. Yeah, I feel. I feel I'm right in the middle. This is uh, you know, Jeff. This, this is an amazing win. The quest. The question was, you know, Nick Nick Foles. What do we? How do we feel? I I thought you were. Describing a Disney movie, if I didn't even hear it, sounds like Nick Foles, the hero of Nick Foles, comes in again. Um, he was writing his own it Disney was, movie. It, it's just, it's crazy the way that the team changes with Nick Foles. You know what I mean? And it's, I don't know if it's injuries coming back or if it's the play callers or the offensive line play or the defense making, you know, key stops. But something changes with, uh, with Nick Foles. I, on the other hand, you know, I just don't see. Even there was a tweet. I think uh, some Chicago reporter was, said that Matt Nagy is going to keep his eye on that game. And if at halftime it it doesn't make sense, he's pulling his players. Yeah. You know, so and that's kind of how I think it's going to go. I mean, you know, there's been weirder things that happen, but when you take a look at it, the likelihood of you know San Francisco beating the Rams is it's just. I mean, at ha- you know making it close at halftime before Chicago pulls someone, I, I just don't see it happening. I, go ahead. It's let about me, hanging around. Let me ask That's you guys a question. Do. Do, do you think the league did the wrong thing or the right thing by moving our games to 4 o'clock where the Bears are now going to have a chance to scoreboard watch versus playing a 1 o'clock game against Minnesota, which they would have been, us playing a 1 o'clock game, and then that Rams game still being at 4 do you think? Do you think the league was right to do that? I think they did us a disservice. I mean, we're we're trying to like we have we have a scenario that's locked up in our minds that like all right, so all the Bears have to do is win this game, and they have to because they don't know what's coming down the pike. Now the the games are all be playing at the same time, and like uh, Diaz said, yeah. you can watch the scoreboard, and any smart coach is not going to jeopardize his players when he doesn't have to. Uh, you know. Now we got to root for the 49ers. Yeah. I'll tell I mean, you what, that betting line wouldn't be as drastic if that Chicago game was at 1 o'clock. Yeah, th- I don't really know. I don't really think they care whether they did us a favor or not. <laughs> I think it's all about money, and they're going to put everyone into Entertainment that 4, yeah, for that the 4, red 4, 30, <laughs> That 4.30, 4.25 slot, I think that just makes more, you know, they're going to have some, some big games right there that they weren't originally going to have. So yeah. you know, you, I think that's the main reason. You know, you, you, you did touch on betting lines there, and – the Bears line, interestingly, with Minnesota, it opened at Minnesota minus seven, yeah. and it's already down to four and a half. And anyone who knows gambling or is watching gambling or has seen it over the years, half point either direction doesn't mean anything. Two and a half point move on a line, you know, three days out. hours, yeah. yeah that, that's a huge jump. That's a huge jump. That's, that's people in the betting community saying, this is outrageous. This game's going to be a lot closer. Now... Does it mean anything, or is that just smart gamblers jumping on a line? I don't really know that. But typically when you see a big line move like that, it means people really believe in the other side. Take that for what it's worth. Or maybe guys. people don't believe in Kirk Cousins. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say, maybe it's a Kirk Cousins effect. That's what happens. Wow, Kirk Cousins getting seven at home. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm Carson Wentz, and I, I go to that stadium every week, I see that statue out there, 
with Nick Foles. Right. And me being a godly man, too. I, I'm still, being a football player, I'd still be competitive as all hell with myself seeing that situation. And, and I know they're, they're, they're godly brothers. They, they really root for each other. You can, you can tell. I mean, the, the su- support system that they have. But I, I think, I mean, this Carson Wentz, um, do you think he's starting to question mm-hmm. things? They're brothers, but you know, brothers also f- can fight, fight and be competitive. Yeah. And uh, as Carson Wentz is the ultimate competitor, I, I think what this is going to do is this is going to really drive him this off season. I, I think that's what's going to ultimately happen. You know, you're hearing with the debates with Eagles fans going back and forth. So ultimately, you're going to have the entire off season where he's healthy. So this is the key because he obviously didn't have that luxury last off season. So you're going to have the healthy off season. The ultimate drive, the ultimate competitor of Carson Wentz coming out next year. I, I think he's going to come out house of fire to start 2019. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, if it's it's easy to sit here and look at the situation, like think about Foles Super yeah. Bowl winning MVP. But d- has anyone like went back and looked at Foles' career? It's it went off the tracks. He wanted to talk about retirement. He was you know mm-hmm. thinking about uh, uh, retiring after being with the Rams. Uh, he got cut on live uh, television. Was on the uh, oh yeah, hard knocks. Hard yeah. knocks. I mean, his career that, was. But, that, but that's Jeff Fisher. I mean, he doesn't know what he's doing, right? But I mean, right. That's, but and Mike Crow was there too. T- yeah, oh, yeah. Dang, yeah. But, but that long play, that was the thing of beauty, man. I had the perfect oh. line on it. I had the perfect line, and he back uh, back splashed right into the uh, yeah. end zone. It was like that game last year. It was Cardinals it was game. great. The Arizona game, yeah. I, I mean, I, I th- tweeted out during that play. I said, "Petty Aguilar is my favorite Nelson." <laughs> oh yeah. And when, I'm just like that touchdown. You know, that's, I know uh, Swagalor. Deshaun Swagler, Jackson right. did that first, but I just for a guy who came from his the career that he had and was questionable at one point to having a breakout season last year, and then you know for him to get that moment, I was like, man, we've been missing that. Yeah, and and that ball that he threw that beautiful trajectory it makes me think of some things that Carson Wentz can actually learn from Nick Foles Carson kind of throws a flat ball sometimes when he throws it deep and even even throwing it to Alshon Jeffrey letting him get outstretched throw it up so he can go up and get it get up and snatch it like a shark and Carson Wentz he kind of throws it again a little flat doesn't allow him to go up and get it the way Nick Foles does so uh that that throw makes me think of that yo Carson Take a look at the tape, Ooh. you know, just just learn a little couple things, that's all. I mean, the thing I like is when the team utilizes their players and where they, like, actually win. Like, yeah. if I bring you in, like, a, a blunt uh, last year, you use him to his abilities. Right. A guy like Alshon Jeffrey, a 50-50 ball specialist, that means he can catch the jump ball. He's a 70-30 specialist. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, a guy with Nelson Aguilar, he has that kind of speed. Uh, yeah, they're utilizing it, and you know they've said that he's not the deep threat. And are the Bears beating the Vikings? <sighs> Man, it's 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 more about what the 49ers are going to do. I'll say this: the 49ers have li- at least looked a little bit better than they. they Nick were. Mullins, man. Yeah, Nick, Nick Mullins. Yeah. yeah. How about Nick Mullins? So Mullins fan. I, I'm going to say that San Francisco hangs around because 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 the Rams they haven't looked the best the last month. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't have a good feeling, but I'll, I'll be the positive poly here. And I, I'm going to say that the Bears are going to do this thing. And so, Diaz, you have uh, the, the Bears winning. I have the Vikings winning. Oh, just, wow. Just, and then you, you said it's the end here. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, the we, Vikings just are just guys. not that good. No, they're not. But, they're but not good. like, man, it just sucks the scenario here. Right. You know, if that game, if that game was in San Fran... I feel a little better. I, w- I feel a lot you better. Know, but it, it's at, in LA at, least, at least it's in L.A. and like it's not weather. a home field advantage for the Rams, really. You I'm going to even this up here. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with the uh, you know the, the dream dream scenario in the, the 08. Let's do it. A decade baby. later, bring let's it do back. it, baby. The birds make it in, man. <laughs> Jeff Garcia 2.0, bro. You know that was that was sitting in in Louisville, Kentucky, in a bar by myself, the only Eagles fan in in 08. <laughs> And watching Michael Bush, ironically, a University of Louisville product. Yes. Yeah. So everyone else in the bar is rooting for him because it's him. I'm rooting for him because <laughs> I knew all the scenarios for the birds. But yeah, I think the Rams are just gonna they're just gonna steamroll the Niners. Yeah, I, and hopefully that the you know the Redskins, you know uh, the Eagle fans that travel to go see the Redskins get to see a, a dub. You know, yeah. uh, we're, we're sort of planning on hoping to go down there on Sunday. I don't know if you bird fans. Want to link up? A lot of us will be down there, um, but I mean, it's it, it's just been a weird season, you know. Eagles! 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 
you want Eagles football? We're talking Eagles football. You're listening to 4th and John. Wait, what the f*** is a John anyway?